Good morning! Today we're coming to you from Pula, Croatia. Today we're going to be taking a walking tour of the city to show you the best sights in Pula. Our first stop is coffee and we've come to the old Roman Forum. It's got great views. We're overlooking the Temple of Augustus. The weather is sunny and nice so it's a really nice place to come and have a cup of coffee. If you come to the Roman Forum, you'll find cafes scattered all around. And the main site of the Forum is the Temple of Augustus, which is right behind us. I think it was bombed pretty badly during World War II, but it looks like they've done a pretty good job of restoring it. The Temple of Augustus is one of the only remaining temples in the Roman Forum. I think there were a couple of other ones, but they're not here today. Uh, this temple was actually used as a church before, and they also used it to store wheat. Now I think it's a museum that you can go inside and check out, but today is Sunday and it is closed. Behind the Forum is our next stop, the Pula Cathedral. It's approximately a two to three minute walk. Walking along the port to get to the Pula Cathedral, we've noticed there are tons of boats and we didn't know this before, but they do dolphin excursions. We're at the Pula Cathedral and Holly just made an interesting observation I noted that the bell towers are separate from the church. Pula Cathedral is a Roman Catholic church and it's on the site of buildings from the 4th and the 5th centuries. Now that we're away from the Forum, Pula is a very quiet sleepy little town. It's a Sunday granted but we're just walking up and down the alleys and not a person to be seen. The street that we're walking down is called Candle Rova and they have lots of cafes and shops but it's Sunday so they're all closed but it's a very cute street to walk down so if you're in Pula check it out. One of the cool things about Pula is you could be walking down the street and out of nowhere there will be an entire Roman ruin just by the side of the road. It is now time for lunch. We're actually really close to Italy so there's a lot of Italian influence and we're gonna go get some pizza. Yeah, we're gonna hit up Pizzeria Jupiter. Normally when you come to restaurants to try different foods, I'm always quite hesitant because it's something that I haven't tried. This time, I feel like we've hit the sweet spot because they have two of my favorite dishes, pizza and spaghetti bolognese. <laughs> so it's actually the opposite. I'm spoiled for choice now. I've ordered a drink called Bombus. It's red wine and Coke. And I thought I invented this cocktail, but it turns out it's a pretty popular drink in Croatia. Cheers. Yay, our pizza just arrived and we ordered mushroom pizza. I cannot wait to dig in. Pizza was delicious. If you end up in Pula, you have to hit up Jupiter's Pizzeria. It is a great show. And we recommend sitting out on the terrace because the outside terrace has such a nice vibe out there. And if the weather's really good, it's the perfect place to have your pizza. Next stop is the main attraction in Pula, the arena. Behind us is the Pula Amphitheater and it is one of the best Roman preserved amphitheaters in the world. They used to have gladiator fights here up until about the 5th century. Now what they use this for is for concerts or performances. We just got tickets to go inside. They were 70 kuna per ticket and the best thing is Chloe is allowed to come as well. This is her first amphitheater that we know of. This is actually incredible. We've got the amphitheater pretty much to ourselves. Wow. This is where literally games, gladiators used to happen and, and they've got their biggest gladiator of all. What's really cool about this amphitheater is that for one, there's no one here at the moment, which is pretty cool because normally in these tourist places, it's just actually swarmed with people. And the second thing is you can actually walk pretty much anywhere that you would like. We were just in the arena and we've come up to the stands and you can get awesome views of the entire amphitheater. 
if you do happen to visit Pula, make sure you come in the summertime because they actually do reenactments of what an actual gladiator show would have been like. It happens every summer holidays starting July. <laughs> We're gonna go down to where the gladiators would wait before they came into the arena. We are underneath the amphitheater and this is the subterranean gallery. It's pretty cool because they still have the Roman artifacts laid out and it's a very cool exhibition center. In the Roman times, the animals and the gladiators used to stay here before they were taken upstairs to fight. Behind me are the amphoras or the vases that they used to transport olive oil. This place was known to be a really big producer of olive oil back in the day and it was one of the main olive oil producing regions for the Roman Empire. Gladiator Chloe is here to fight off any soldier who tries to cross her path. The Pula Arena is definitely the main attraction here. You can visit it for free by walking around the outside, but we recommend you come inside because you can walk all around, you can go down into the subterranean gallery, see where they stored olive oil, and where the beast and the gladiators came out before their fights. Now, keeping with the Italian theme, we're gonna try and get some gelato. About a one minute walk from the Pula Arena is a gelato shop called Fortuna and we got some gelato. I got the cherry yogurt one and Ali got some strawberry and chocolate ice cream. Right across from the Fortuna gelato shop is the Twin Gate which is also our next stop. The twin gates are part of the old defense walls and I think there are only three gates remaining. Less than a minute's walk down from the twin gate is Hercules Gate. The Hercules Gate is the oldest monument in Pula and it has a statue of Hercules at the top because Hercules was the protector of Pula. Our next stop is to visit the castle. It's on top of a hill so there are going to be really nice views of the city of Pula. This castle behind us is a French style fortress and I think it's in the shape of a star. If you walk up the stairs you get really nice views of the city and the harbor. We're slowly making our way down the hill from the castle. So what we've explored so far, the old town of Pula, is actually pretty compact. You don't actually have to walk that much to get to places. Our next stop is the Arch of Sergei. It's also known as the Golden Arch and it's one of the three remaining gates of the city of Pula. The Sergei family built this arch after a battle that they had won. And also in the same area to my right is the James Joy statue. He's a famous Irish author that wrote Ulysses and he lived in Pula for about a year teaching English. Our penultimate stop is to see the Rimsky mosaic. The story behind this is back in the day they were building buildings here, an apartment block, and when they were making the foundation they realized that there was a whole mosaic over here. To get to the Rimsky mosaic you kind of have to go through a car parking lot. It's behind this residential building, it's a pretty innocuous looking area. I'm genuinely low-key impressed by the quality of the mosaic and how well it's been preserved. I thought it was just going to be another ruin but this is a proper legit floor. It was actually the floor of someone's living room uh, back in the Roman times and it says it's called, the Mo it's called Mosaic the Punishment of Dirce. Right across from the mosaic is the Chapel of St. Maria Formosa. Our final stop of Pula City is at the Old City Bar. Thank you so much for watching our Pula vlog. We have new videos coming out on Tuesdays and Fridays. So please, if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button and get your one-way ticket with us.